A very good morning and greetings to each and every one of you this Sunday and especially as we journey through the Gospel of Matthew. Our Gospel reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 11 verses 16 to 19 and verses 25 to 30. But to what will I compare this generation? Is it like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another? We play the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He is, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of the tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. It is indeed another Sunday that you listen to me via a podcast instead of seeing each other face to face. And so I continue to have you in my prayers and trust that each and every one of you are keeping well and keeping safe in this very difficult time. Our gospel reading this morning um, begins with Jesus condemning the attitude of his generation. They neither listen to John nor Jesus And John's austere lifestyle led people to accuse him of having a demon, while Jesus' habit of eating and drinking with sinners earned him a bad reputation. And this generation took offense at both Jesus and John. No matter what they said or what they did, they took the opposite view. They were cynical and skeptical because listening to Jesus and Jesus is challenging their competencies, would entail them having to change their own lives. And Jesus goes on to mention two kinds of people in his prayer. The first kind he calls the wise, and the wise here are those who were arrogant in their own knowledge. And the second is little children, those who humbly open themselves to receive the truth of God's word. And we have to ask ourselves, are we wise in our own eyes or do we see God's truth with a childlike faith, realizing that it is only God who holds all the answers? Now, the word no in the Old Testament was meant uh, more than knowledge. It meant an intimate relationship, the, the communion between God the Father and God the Son, where this relationship is the core uh, of of the message and for anyone to know God God will have to reveal himself uh, to that person by the son's choice by Jesus' choice and it is a wonder Jesus says no one can come to the Father unless they come through me Jesus always guides us in our journey and we are so very fortunate to know that Jesus reveals us uh, uh, reveals to us God and, and to God's truth and how we can know Him. We then come to the yoke being easy and our burdens being light. Easier said than done, right? So as you know, all our biblical stories are based according to the context of the time. Now the wearing of the yoke as viewed in the Old Testament was an outward sign of an inward relationship. And by obeying the laws uh, of the covenant, uh, like such as circumcision, dietary laws, animal sacrifice, and so forth, each person was testifying to an inward life of holiness with God. And in our gospel reading this morning, Jesus is offering a different kind of yoke 
than the harsh legalistic system of the time of the Torah. Jesus came to know his father the way any good son does, not by studying books about him, but by living in his presence, listening for his voice and learning from him as an apprentice does from his master, by watching and imitating. I always use the term monkey see, monkey do, uh, as I was raising my daughter. And when Jesus addressed the crowds that day, he had already discovered that the wise and the learned were getting nowhere. And the ordinary people, the fact, uh, uh, the less than ordinary, those, the sinners, the tax collectors, they were discovering God simply by following him. The yoke was the heavy wooden uh, uh, harness that was attached to the ox or oxen across its shoulders, which was then attached to a sort of a plow which it had to pull through the soil in order to prepare the soil. It was indeed heavy and hard work and this hard work's reward was the soil being prepared for harvest. We all must know uh, images of slaves in chains working fields and mines being whipped or starved in order to get the work done. And all of this is one simple word burden. In biblical days, people carried the burdens of, of their government as well as religious leaders, but especially the excessive demands of the religious leaders. They had to follow and observe the religious laws and rituals. Um, and of course, oppression and persecution was present without a doubt. Today we are burdened with many different things, with other different things. And especially in this time of this pandemic, it is an added burden to many of us. We carry the world on our shoulders and often we walk with our heads down, our shoulders heavy hanging down and dragging our feet upon the ground. And this yoke, the challenges and burdens in our lives, makes it difficult to partner with Christ in our lives. Our responsibilities to life, to family, to our workplaces, to our country, maybe weigh us down and so even the effort in staying true to God becomes a burden weighing us down. Jesus doesn't offer a promise uh, uh, of luxury life the yoke is still the oxen's tool for working hard. But what Jesus is saying is that he has already promised us love and healing and peace and all that he is. Our relationship with the him, with Jesus, changes meaningless, wearisome toil into spiritual productivity and purpose. The hard work put into the soil produces good harvest. Our hard work with burdens means the perseverance by way of knowing that the yoke on our shoulders is a shared yoke, shared with the shoulders bigger than ours, with someone who has more pulling power than ours, someone who is up front helping us already before we even know it. It's about partnering with the one who is greater than any of us. And being in partnership with God is the greatest and best partnership you will ever have. Paul in our Romans reading, chapter 7, verses 15 to 25, please read it. It's a beautiful passage. It is an example of how when things are done alone leads to a bit of a disaster. Paul, in dealing with his own sinful ways or uh, with the burdens of life, shares three simple lessons with us today. And the first is that knowledge of any rule or rules is not the answer. Paul felt fine as long as he didn't have to understand what the law demanded. But when he learned the truth, he knew he was doomed. The second lesson is self-determination uh, doesn't succeed, meaning that your struggle in your own strength doesn't help you succeed. Paul found himself sinning in ways which was not even attractive to himself. And the third lesson is becoming a Christian does not stamp out all uh, burdens and temptations and sins from a person's life. 
Being born again means that it takes a moment of faith, but becoming like Christ is a lifelong process. At my time of conversion in my late 20s, early 30s into the Christian faith, there are words of the Reverend Paula McKenzie I will never forget. After listening to some of my reasons, she said to me, Becoming a Christian doesn't mean you won't have any problems. Oh boy, if I only knew what she meant at that time. My journey has definitely been one of faith. But this journey is one I have to take every single day. Yes, it is filled with joy and laughter and love and life. But often my journey is filled with tears, with pain, with hurt, with loneliness. And it takes hard work. It takes hard work to return to that point of knowing that God is with me that He is before me, pulling the plow and helping me already to prepare the soil. And this is what you don't understand and know about me. Most times people expect a priest to be perfect. Well, I'm disappointed to let, I'm, to let you know that I'm anything but perfect. I am a work in progress every day, just like you. Our journey to please God is not about rules and regulation. It is keeping in touch with the Spirit of God, with His Son Jesus Christ and ultimately with God. Never fight any battle or carry any burden on your own. Take hold of the power of Christ who is available to us. His provision gets us through always because when we fall, He reaches out lovingly and He helps us up again. I cannot express to you in words how much God helps me every single day, how much He has helped me through my difficult times of carrying heavy burdens. I cannot tell you how many times uh, uh, He has helped me figure out that He is with me, that He is helping me, that He is uh, uh, carrying my burden. And so our Christian faith is not about religion. It is not about uh, uh, religious practices. It is not about following guidelines and rules. But it is about living a new reality every single day. We follow Jesus Christ not because He has established a new religion, but because He is the end of of a religion. Jesus transcends religion. Jesus is above religion. We live uh, the life of Christ not for ourselves but rather so that we can exist beyond ourselves. And we must recognize that following Christ is more about being than it is about doing. It is difficult following Jesus Christ. It is and it will be difficult. But putting on His yoke is just taking up uh, uh, our own crosses to follow Him. Sometimes it will hurt and it will be hard. But when Jesus calls us to come to Him when we are weary with, with heavy burdens, He is not calling us to Himself, but to the living community of the body of Christ, the church. It's not a building, but to His people, the one seated next to you. One of the most revolutionary parts of Jesus' ministry was calling us to live for one another. Jesus did not call us into Christianity, but he called us into a new sense of being. You don't need to be wise or intelligent to find Jesus. You don't need to be a theologian or a scholar to know who he is. And no amount of knowledge or intellect will ever compare to the rest of what we can find through faith in Jesus. Following Christ is about humbling yourself like a child, living into a new and blessed reality, looking upon the world in an unbiased manner, loving those around you, and experiencing God as you experience life. Nothing is demanded of you, no conceptions of God, and no goodness in yourselves, not your being religious, 
not you being a Christian, not your being intelligent and not your being moral. But what is demanded is only your being open and willing to accept what is given to you, a new being, the being of love and justice and truth, as it manifests in Jesus, whose yoke is easy and whose burden is light. I learned that my humility and just trusting God in having that faith, in, in knowing that He is with me, that He's carrying me every single day, that He knows my heart, that He knows my mind, and, and that He leads the way is what takes me through every single day to be more like Him and less like me. This is what John Wesley said about the one thing that is needful. The one thing needful, Wesley said, was the restoration of the image of God that was implanted within each of us in our unique lives. I can think of no greater way to restore the one thing needful, the image of God in our lives, than finding rest in Jesus. I offer this to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Come to me, you weary ones, and I will give you rest. I will give you
to embrace you.